Um, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being um, here today. Um, this uh, workshop um, will show you uh, some examples for the use of AI in the um, legal industry. Um, the title of our panel is uh, Embracing uh, AI in Legal Practice. So, the positive effects of AI uh, support firms, consumers and economic growth. Uh, the peak was the third quarter of 2023. Uh, by then, all big tech companies had jumped into the AI fray. The hype around AI may be slowly normalizing, um, according to data compiled by Bloomberg, uh, recently showing that the number of um, times the word AI, machine learning, generative AI, etc., were mentioned on earnings calls decreased from 517 instances in Q4 2023 to 188 in Q1 24. Uh, so my name is Christina Grigoriadou. Um, I'm an economist and an attorney at law. I'm a senior associate at Musas and Parsons Law Firm. Uh, my main area has been international arbitration and dispute resolution, uh, but today I'm here to show you an example of an international arbitration case and how um, the judge BT responded. Um, I'd like also to present you uh, the other members of the, of, my, of the panel. So it's uh, Kostadinos Anagnostopoulos. He's an attorney at law, uh, director, co founder at Athens Legal Tech. And it's Susanna Kalendian. Um, she's a co founder and CEO at um, Legal Advice Middle East. Um, Susanna will uh, join us remotely. Um, hello, again. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for, uh, for inviting. And uh, we're Really happy to be contract partners uh, with uh, with Jenny Summit. Hello, Susanna. Hello to Dubai. Hi, Hello. Susanna. Hi. How are you? How's everything? I can't see you though. But still, you can get the aura. Yeah. <laughs> and Hopefully. <super. laughs> okay, that's great. Um, so now it's nice to be here, Susanna, uh, remotely, um, and uh, thank you for uh, your time. So, um, should I start? Yeah. Uh, all yeah. right. So, you do the first half and then we do the yes, second half. Okay. Yes. Um, Perfect. So, ChatGPT and other chatbots exploded overnight for the general public, for companies and people in the industry. Of course, this was not overnight. Uh, ChatGPT is not the only one uh, generative AI tool, but uh, it's definitely one of the most popular ones. Uh, there are much more um, in the from the industry giants like Google, Microsoft and Amazon, for example, Gemini X Bard, um, Copilot and many, many others. So there are also numerous AI tools uh, that makes things easier, uh, such as creating presentations, websites, visualizing data, um, everything we can possibly imagine. Uh, Scribe, Agent GPT, Trip Notes, Rose, Beautiful, Huberman, etc. Um, a few weeks ago, OpenAI released Sora, their um, new text-to-video um, model, mind-blowing, um, entirely generated, and looks completely real, and think of the implications. Uh, a week ago, I was in India, and uh, there was a long discussion about um, uh, India uh, is actually developing its own chat GPT, it's called Hanuman, um, and it's being developed with backing of Reliance. The model is uh, being developed in collaboration with eight Indian universities and uh, the backing of the government. So that's expected to offer services in four different fields, financial services, healthcare, education and governance, and it will work in 11 languages. I know that India has 780 languages. So we're here today to see how JGPT um, impacts the legal industry. Uh, the legal sector is currently experiencing a significant transformation, largely um, due to the increasing um, integration of artificial intelligence. Um, a recent Goldman Sachs report estimated that 44% in the US um, of legal tasks could be automated by AI, a higher percentage than in any sector other than administrative work. This statistic is um, eye-opening and compels us to rethink the role of legal professionals in an AI-driven future. Uh, what we want to see today is uh, what AI is capable of doing 
a real-time example. Um, a classic use in the legal industry uh, would be to ask the chatbot to provide specific legal arguments, conduct research, generate a contract, write an opening statement. Um, and I have to say that it's done a quite solid job, but not in all cases. Um, what we have to note is that um, your best answers are going to be dependent on how good your questions are. So, uh, while preparing my notes for today, I wrote a prompt and three ultimate questions to ask the chat GPT. Uh, I use the most mainstream chatbot, um, there are many, many more. Uh, before showing you the case study, uh, I'd like to share some uh, potential uses um, of AI-powered apps or chatbots in the legal industry. Uh, legal research by quickly scanning through large amounts of text data and providing relevant information on a given topic. AI-powered tools can um, streamline legal research by quickly analyzing vast databases, core decisions and legal precedents. Uh, two major schools of thought, gradual build-up or early baptism. Um, document generation, such as contracts or briefs. Automated drafting, generative AI can assist in drafting contracts by providing suggestions and generating clauses based on predefined templates and legal language. Providing general legal uh, information to the public, uh, such as answering frequently, answered, um, fre frequently asked questions, uh, or providing some basic legal advice. Uh, legal analysis by providing suggestions and insights based on its understanding of the relevant legal principles and precedents. Contract review, due diligence automation. AI can analyze large volumes of contracts quickly, flagging potential issues, discrepancies, or non-compliance with the legal standards. Comparative analysis. Generative AI can compare different versions of contracts, highlighting changes and ensuring that all parties are aware of the modifications. Um, you insert the content in the platform, ask the chatbot to summarize key things of the contract each party should be aware of. Or ask the chatbot to find possible points for negotiation. Um, this uh, ra question arises if you need to do key assumptions. Um, compliance. Regulatory compliance checker. AI tools can automatically check contracts for compliance with specific laws and regulations. This reduces um, the risk of non-compliance and ensures the legal documents adhere to the latest legal standards. Audit trail. AI can maintain a detailed audit trail of changes, track changes made to legal documents, facilitating compliance tracking and providing a clear record of document evolution. Predictive analysis. AI-powered systems can assist making more informed legal decisions by predicting outcomes based on historical data. Litigation outcomes. AI algorithms can analyze past court decisions and predict possible outcomes of current cases. Lawyers, um, and this helps lawyers to uh, strategize more effectively. Risk assessment. These tools can evaluate the risks involved in pursuing a case or transaction, giving lawyers and their clients better insights for decision making. So now, um, I have a question, um, and um, we will see um, how the uh, ChatGPT uh, responded. So um, if we could uh, move to the second slide, please. Uh, the third slide, please. Thank you. So uh, this is the question. Uh, I will go through that, and um, we'll see um, how the response um, is prepared. So, this is the matter. Um, there is a response prepared by a council, me in this case, on the left side that will show, I will show you later, and on the other side is the response prepared by the uh, chat GPT. So, uh, the case study is as follows. Um, a CEO client requests urgent advice, a brief memo, one page to address potential options available to the client. So the matter is, we have an urgent request for advice in relation to a contract entered into a subsidiary in the Philippines, the bank, and a state-owned company in Thailand, the Thai Fund. The facts are set out below. In 2012, the bank entered into, an, into a 500 million facility agreement with Thai Fund, pursuant to which the bank provided the funds uh, to Thai Fund to be used for the construction of government hospitals and schools in Thailand. Under the terms of the facility agreement, the principal and interest is payable to the bank on a quarterly basis. Thai Fund has now missed paying the principal and interest under the facility agreement for the past three quarters are amounting to 55 million. 
It's public knowledge that Thailand is experiencing a sovereign debt crisis and has declared a state of emergency. Thai Fund has informed the bank that in light of the state of emergency, it's considering all options. Client approached the relevant ministries in Thailand for assistance, but they have refused to help. At the time, the client entered the facility agreement. They received multiple emails and letters from Thai government confirming that they would always stand behind Thai Fund's obligations. That it was with this expectation that the client entered into the facility agreement. Um, the facility agreement is governed by Swedish law. Uh, there's a dispute resolution clause that refers that all disputes under the facility agreement to, uh, to arbitration in Singapore under the SIAC arbitration rules. The client understands that moral damages are regularly awarded under Swedish law. Moral damages um, are against public policy uh, in Singapore and are forbidden under Singaporean law. So the client um, would be grateful for advice about one, bank's options under the contract, two, identify any challenges the bank may face in attempting to enforce an award in Singapore, three, the bank's options under international law. On the left side is the response prepared by the council, on the right side um, it's the chat GPT response. Um, so if we, if we go for the, to the, through the first question, uh, bank's options under the contract, uh, so under the terms of the contract, uh, which is governed by Swedish law, the principal and interest is payable on a quarterly basis, Taifan has missed payments, breach of contract, uh, under Swedish law, and then uh, the client can, ask, can seek damages. Uh, further, substantive claims may include misrepresentation, depending on the content of Swedish law. Um, and then, uh, of course, the arbitration clause provides for arbitration under SIAC. So let's see how uh, the chat GPT performed. It looks like uh, some of the issues are there, but not all, and not in detail. So, of course, the disclaimer that it's not a lawyer, and then review contact terms, examine the terms of the facility agreement, especially any clause related to default remedies and force majeure. Determine if there are provisions of the bank to take action in the event of non-payment. So, that's not a response for this question. Next one, initiate arbitration. This is something that, yes, uh, that's something that it, it seems that uh, uh, ChatGPT actually um, identified that. Um, so the next question, um, identify any challenges a bank may face in attempting to enforce an award in Singapore. So um, looking at the responses, um, it looks like, uh, again, I didn't, ChatGPT identified some of the issues, for example, the bilateral investment treaty, uh, but it's very generic. The response is too generic, actually, uh, and it's not helpful. Um, because the seat of arbitration is Singapore, the enforcement of the award in Singapore is subject to recognition of the award by local courts in accordance with local law. Given that Swedish law, as the governing law of the contract provides for moral damages, and that arbitral tribunal may award such damages, damages in applying the governing law of the contract, local court in Singapore may refuse to recognize and enforce the award. Looks like this is highlighted by ChatGPT2, as it says in the second point, uh, that uh, given the prohibition of moral damages in Singapore, there could be challenges in enforcing any award that includes such damages. So, okay, it looks like it identified that. But again, there's no solution there. So, as a council, um, this will not only mean that the award will face significant challenges in being enforced in Singapore, but uh, it may face further challenges in being recognized and enforced in other jurisdictions. Um, under the New York Convention on the Recognition and Enforcement of Foreign Outdoor Awards, the recognition and enforcement of an award that has been set aside by the competent authority of the country in which it was made may be refused under Article 5. So while the issue of whether the provision establishes an option for competent courts in other jurisdictions, or indeed, um, in an obligation uh, is far from clear. So a solution would be not to ask for damages, for moral damages, sorry, uh, despite the entitlement to do so under Swedish law. Uh, Charge GPT did not provide a solution. Third question, um, the bank's options under international law. So, um, if I was on this wrong slide before, I'm sorry. Uh, the bank's options under international law. 
Um, so Thailand and the Philippines are parties to the bilateral agreement for the promotion and protection of investments. Uh, the first question must be if the loan facility constitutes an investment under the agreement for the latter to be applicable. This is likely the case as the definition of investment in Article 1 is suitably broad and includes claims to money under contract having financial value. So looks like, um, yes, ChatGPT uh, identified uh, that, but um, again, not a lot of information and very generic. And then uh, we have to examine that uh, the breach of the loan facility contract may be elevated to a breach of the agreement in accordance with umbrella clause, Article 3. The bank may also claim breach of fair and equitable treatment standard. Um, as its legitimate expectations have been um, uh, created by direct, explicit and continued representation of the Thai government, which indeed the bank, uh, which induced the bank to conclude the contract. So these have been violated. This is something that ChatGPT hasn't identified at all. Um, so Thailand may have a limited defense under Article 6 of the agreement, which provides that compensation for loss in case of national emergencies shall be subject to national treatment and most favored nation treatment. However, Thailand may be able to shield itself from responsibility uh, altogether by invoking necessity. Again, that's nothing in the response of ChatGPT. So the most important problem, however, is a dispute settlement clause in the agreement. Under Article 14, after consultations have taken place and have not succeeded in bringing about a solution within three months, ad hoc arbitration may be sought. But this would require the agreement of the Thai state. Um, exit arbitration is provided for in Article 14.2, but Thailand is not a party to the exit convention, having signed but not ratified it, not to mention the problems which may arise in satisfying the exit definition of investment. Again, this is something that there's not in the Judge PT response. Um, so it looks like a very generic um, response. Um, sovereign immunity is there as a, as a point, but again, uh, it has a disclaimer, consult with legal es experts. Then it has um, a fourth uh, of its own uh, uh, um, generated by, to by itself, I didn't ask that. It says, um, document communications, keep digital records, that looks like an advice, of all communications with Thai fund, including the notices of default and any responses received. Engage in negotiations prior or alongside legal proceedings, consider engaging in negotiations to explore potential resolutions. This may involve discussing revised payment plan. So it Can looks I ask like- you something? Mm -hmm. uh, did you feed the data or did you just ask the question? No, I just asked the question. As a question, okay, okay. Um, because with GPT uh, Plus also, you can attach a document. Yes. And then you get a different interaction. So usually GPT, we've seen the, sorry to interrupt, oh, but just okay. to make it a bit more uh, interactive. Uh, I, we noticed that it works uh, very well if you ask a very specific, uh, you know, do this, uh, one blog. Don't write the entire lawsuit. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. as an observation. No, I, I left um, I left it free okay. to respond by itself. Okay, okay. Just I by itself. Okay. Yeah, I didn't feed any data. Okay, okay. Um, and finally, the disclaimer, of course, of uh, ChatGPT is that given the complexity and sensitivity of the situation, is strongly committed to seek advice from legal professionals. Um, so it looks like um, that in this case, which is a bit more complex than a classic uh, contract generation or a simple question, um, it's obvious that ChatGPT identified some issues. Uh, of course, not all. Of course, not in detail. Um, so integrating AI in legal practice is an exciting but challenging uh, development. Um, as AI legal professionals, we must be at the forefront of this change, guiding AI's ethical and practical use um, in our field. So the future of law is here, and it's definitely AI-powered. Um, generative AI can reduce legal costs and errors um, and increase productivity and quality uh, with demonstrations and best practices. Um, on the other hand, lawyers have to be very, very cautious of its use. Um, so uh, that's for me. I leave the floor for my co-panelists to show their examples. That's perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Christiana. That was a very, very specific and very, you know, uh, 
full detailed uh, case you had. Uh, we're going to tinker now live with uh, more uh, basic, let's say, staff of Lawyer's Life. Uh, we're going to do some uh, document generation out of the blue, and then we're going to tinker with that, uh, uh, with that idea, and we're going to try to extract some strategy, some key insights, and see how that takes us. And uh, I'll try to do, if uh, we have some time, uh, some uh, point with legal research. And then Susanna will do a document review and analysis. I will use GPT-4. Uh, so it's a plus account, it's a paid account. And I will also use Perplexity, which is more like an augmented search engine. And uh, Susanna from Dubai will use uh, Robin AI, which is pretty accurate and pretty cool with, uh, with contracts. So let's start. Um, I'll give me a second. I will make it very easy, very real, very ordinary. Please write. There was no, please refresh the page. OK. Oh, yes. I need the. Uh, I don't need. I will do my, uh, my hotspot here. So I don't need you. OK. So please write. So the prompt. OK. Did it load the, did it load the prompt or not? OK. No? Does it work? Just give me a second. These bloody technologies. I mean, you know, uh, they promise us everything. So, it's a pretty standard and very, uh, not very specific. It's a general prompt. Uh, you're a European lawyer. You want to write a draft of an extra judicial letter uh, to your clients. Uh, Landlord about the bathroom leakage, etc., etc., etc. So the clause, so uh, so the prompt is very simple. You have a bathroom leakage, and uh, you want to ask for the damages. So blah blah blah. I'm writing to you in my capacity as the legal representative of Mrs. Rigoriado, currently leasing your property under this contract. As per the leasing contract, it is your possibility to ensure that all necessary repairs, despite multiple attempts by my client to resolve, therefore, to their no satisfactory resolution, blah, 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 blah. It's an interesting. Uh, that in less than a minute, actually in a couple of seconds, you have a draft template of an extra judicial letter in a very generic and user-friendly LLM as chat, uh, uh, chat GPT. Now, I have used GPT for, for tinkering with serious, more serious cases with extra judicial letters uh, on very specific aspects, and I will show you. Now, I want to add a paragraph or two about further damages at the floor because I forgot that, you know, that was the case. And then it's pretty fast. In addition to the above mentioned bathroom damage, it's crucial to highlight that the leakage has also caused significant damage to the flooring adjacent to the bathroom area. This damage, blah, 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 blah. I've tinkered a lot with extrajudicial letters, so I have something very specific for a case which is in Greek, but it's a very technical case about a sheep, etc., etc. I copy that in Greek, I copy that in GPT, I translate that, it's pretty good for translation, and then I change the tone. So I want to change the tone. I had an extra judicial letter uh, a month ago against a US company, and because I know the US companies and the US lawyers are very aggressive, so I copy pasted and I said, you know, I want to escalate, so make it really aggressive in American English. And it was perfection. It, it was like in 15 seconds, a perfection. And I would spend probably half an hour or an hour because I would go to Black's Law Dictionary. I would say, yeah, how do they say that? You know, the tort, but it's not a tort, it's something else. I, I want to say that. Right. Yeah, et cetera, et cetera. So it was uh, perfect. Now, you see, I told ChatGPT to change the tone and you have uh, furthermore, it is imperative to address the severe damage, your failure to respond adequately to these critical issues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's really interesting. Then, out of this, out of this content of this letter, I want to create the outline of a lawsuit, of a civil lawsuit. So I instruct an, 
and instruct GPT with a prompt to create a 10 paragraphs uh, outline for a civil lawsuit, which is really nice. So you start from zero, you get a letter, you change the tone, you play with that, then you have a, a basic uh, outline of a civil lawsuit, let's say, which covers the factual background, the legal basis, the request, etc., etc. Let it, uh, let's not be very demanding, let it, you know, breathe for a few seconds and let me get some water. Uh, generally speaking, I find generic LLMs r really useful for all these secondary legal tasks. Of course, it's much easier if you, not much easier, much safer and the correct way to do it, to anonymize or to, ta or to take, you know, texts from your uh, uh, case file that are not, uh, you know, um, privacy concerned. So, you know, just do some more generic stuff and it's very easy. Uh, now it takes some time for, uh, for it to write the outline. We can wait or we can move later uh, to what we call a brainstorming. So you started with a simple idea, you got a letter, you got an outline, you changed the tone, now you want to play with that in terms of brainstorming. So before it finishes, so let me finish, we would ask what would you do if you would represent the landlords? So if you were the landlord's lawyer, what would you counter argue? Now let's give it a second more to finish its outline. Okay, so we have a pretty interesting outline, introduction, jurisdiction and venue because I prompted it to be before the New York State courts, factual background, legal claims, damages, etc., etc. Now I'm playing with that and I want to brainstorm and I want to see, you know, what can I do with that? So you have the Thai case and you want to change the feeling. So you're not, you do not represent the Thai fund, but you present, let's say, another bank or etc. That's so, nice. What would you respond to this extrajudicial letter if you were the landlord's lawyer? Let's see, uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, I find it really interesting because it's very affordable, even for, I mean, even, even for a solo practitioner to have a, you know, to have a plus subscription to any a uh, foundational model with $25 per month. I think it's interesting because I think at some point we all got to sandbox this technology, even at the, these secondary legal tasks, you know, change the tone of the letter. Or you, or you know what, I've got this last part of the contract and I want to make it more, uh, you know, more more in my favor. So please change the tone or do a uh, British professional English because it's more, you know, uh, ambiguous. So we've got the counter arguments, acknowledge of communication that we acknowledge the dispute of the facts, previous actions taken, proposal for independent assessment, meaning that, okay, is it the bathroom leakage or should we both, you know, assign a, a plumber and come and see and do the analysis, etc. legal obligations, request for further documentation, etc., etc. And now, uh, the last that it comes when it comes to this, to the negotiations. So that's client's strategy. So that's another segment. So if the total amount of the tenant amounts to 10,000 US dollars, what would be the best settlement amount to close the dispute in an amicable way? So here we ask uh, GPT-4 to uh, draw a, a negotiation strategy and a request. And it's interesting, um, I tested it quite a few times and sometimes it uh, uh, suggests a 5K to 7K, which makes sense. Some other times it suggests a 7 to 9K, which I don't think is a very good proposal to go to the landlord and say, okay, 9K and it's a bargain for you because it's not a bargain. So I'm really uh, curious to what uh, now the suggestion would be. Uh, it's pretty interesting because GPT instructs you to think about the claims defenses, the litigation costs. I mean, it's a 10K uh, uh, dispute, 
So what are you going to do? Mitigation factors, non-monetary consideration, goodwill. Okay, so we have a 70-90% of the claim amount. Okay, not bad. So that's pretty much a very basic case how to tinker on a daily basis and very frequently with uh, GPT-4 or 3.5, it doesn't really matter. What matters is the game, what matters is to get uh, familiar with the technology. Now I have really, sh I'm really short on time, so I'm gonna really speed show you. I got a judgment from, actually no. I'll let uh, Susanna uh, start because we have only 12 minutes. I'll let uh, Susanna go with Robin AI. And uh, if we have some time in the end, maybe we'll do some legal research. Thank you. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, maybe just to add on, because uh, two previous examples from my co panelists were around ChatGPT. Um, I don't know how familiar the audience is with ChatGPT in general, but if you need some kind of a help or you're not sure where to start, I can um, share with you the resource of like how you can go and actually do what uh, Konstantinas just did um, around prompting specifically. I can hear myself in the echo. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to share. I, I love the dog. I, I cannot share the screen. I love the dog. So what's the dog's name? Uh, thank you. He's a legal tech expert, by the way, who's yeah, exactly. from this yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly he what is. it he looks is like, actually. all the calls with me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you please ask um, someone to um, enable me to show the screen? Yeah, uh, guys. Uh, Kind of it's all the time when, you know, I think Christina had done the very good um, work in preparation. So she just prepared the static yeah. slides. So no error um, possible. And we actually risk a lot and we're just going to show you the actual tools and we are not sure how they're going to work. So do you have the screen sharing option or not? And what the not? results would be, especially with generative AI. I think... Yeah, here you go. I still have it. Okay, so I'll pretty quickly show you this. Can you see my screen? No, not yet. Yes, now I can. Okay. Can. Okay, That's so your cheat pretty sheet. quickly. Okay. Uh, this is the resource. This is a cheat sheet for you if you like to use something. So the basic action, something that uh, Konstantinos just mentioned, writing, summarizing, brainstorming, finding, okay. you know, um, extracting the information from the contract. If, you, if you're looking at lengthy documents, some advanced that. applications and the basic formula. If you can act as a lawyer and prepare this draft as an American,